In a previous episode, I got a chance to get in a dugout canoe, just like they would have made in the 18th century. Got a chance to paddle that around. It was a phenomenal experience. Now I want to make one. I've got Eric Bostein here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into making a canoe. But what do we need first? First, we have to find the log, and I've always said that a dugout canoe is the highest calling for a log. It needs to be tall, it needs to be straight, and it needs to be untwisted, and it needs to be big. Let's see what we can find in the woods. Let's do it. So I got to admit that I've been excited about this project, and we tried to do it before with a cottonwood tree, but we had a lot of trouble. Well, you'll have to tell me what happened. <laughs> So a few months back, I went out into my parents' woods and we found basically just the right tree, this huge cottonwood that was 40 feet to the first branch. We started off with axes, of course. We ended up using a chainsaw at the end. The tree was huge. It came down and it just shook the woods. The problem is it came down in sort of a pit. We went ahead and, and debarked it, but it was down in this pit. It was impossible. It was impossible to get out. We did end up getting a lot of bark off. We split this whole top third of the tree off, but still, I'll bet that log weighs, even at 20 feet long, probably 3,000 pounds by the time we got done. So, And we just couldn't get it out of the pit. We, we just couldn't get it out. Well, I've heard that a lot, actually. It tends to be the case that people start a dugout and it somehow never gets finished. And there are a lot of pitfalls and a lot of things you need to be aware of mm -hmm. along the way. So it's, it's, it is something that has been tried a lot and failed, has, a, lot. And, and failed a lot. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of facilities I've seen have actually had trouble with that. So, um, th and there are some particular construction things that we'll go through as we do this that really help ensure that success. This one, this tulip here looks just about perfect. It is a really nice, straight, untwisted, long trunk. Yeah, so how long, do, how, how tall do you think this is before that first real branch? I'm gonna say that's 60 feet. Yeah. So we're looking for a tree, like what kind of diameter? I would say a minimum of 25 to 26 inches, and that's a narrow canoe. Right. There are accounts of canoes that are so wide that you could put an easy chair in the middle and grandma could be ferried right. down the river. Right. So 30 inches is a, is a great width, and there are accounts of very, very long canoes, up to 40 and 60 feet long single canoes with many, many people riding. Okay, so we're not going to use this particular tree. You've arranged for a log? Yeah, I found a log and you know, in if you had your choice of every log, you would pick one. Like I said, this is, this is probably the highest calling for a tree and you would need one that were both not twisted, no knots, anything like that. And you would you could easily then split the top and bottom off to mm -hmm. make your to make your like plank. two different ones. Right. Unfortunately, in today's world, this tree is very valuable, and it, a lot of times we can find a tree that will work and have it have it milled first, right. and that's what I've done, okay. so that we can start with something and we don't have to chop through the knots because you can't split through knots, and if the tree is twisted, it will the the, the, right. the split will twist. Sure. So. For trees that aren't perfect, it's it's a much it opens up a lot of possibilities for us to use recycled logs and logs that are already being right. harvested. And we're gonna let this one get bigger. Yes, this there we one, go. This one's not quite big enough, but it's close. It's yeah, you know, it's that yeah. big. Beautiful, so, just beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a stunning tree. Hey guys, you ready to chop? Good. Okay, so uh, this is our tree, right? All right, yeah. What, what do we is, got here? This is our prepared our prepared log, and what we're gonna do now is remove everything that isn't a boat. And to do that, we use a combination of chopping and fire. Okay. It's really about that simple, but there are some pitfalls along the way, so we have to make sure we do things correctly. Basically, we wanna not remove the outer two edges. We wanna stay away from that. Just okay. leave that till the end. Right. And then about the last foot here. So we're gonna hollow out everything in here. Okay. All the way down. Well, that's a lot of hacking. Let's get to it.
Whew. Okay. It's work. So this is a lot of work. We're probably gonna use some fire, right? Yes, I think so. So the first thing we wanna really do, we wanna concentrate on getting a trench about that okay. wide and about that deep all the way down through the center that we can then put our fire in because the fire tends to burn outward faster than it burns down. Okay. So we wanna stay fairly narrow and then after that, we'll use that to make a fire all the way down the lane. Okay. So we're gonna do a little burning, right? Yep. So we've made a trench here to get started and that'll give us a little place for air to get under. Uh -huh. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take smaller sticks like these and right. we'll, we may split some wood as well. And we're just gonna stack them all up along here, nice and loose, like right. a nice airy campfire. Because okay. what we want is heat with air right. on this wood to burn it. But we wanna let, we wanna let all that flow through it. You wanna let all of it flow and then, and then also let it burn clear to white ash. So uh -huh. once the fire's going, don't feed it anymore. Let it burn until it's gone, then add wood again and do it again. Uh -huh. And with each of those, we can expect anywhere from five eighths to three quarters an inch of wood removal. So we don't want to build up ash because that insulates the that's, wood and that's doesn't right. move it away. Ash, especially down here, right. insulates and it stops oxygen from hitting this wood. We want oxygen and heat on this wood to right. consume the fuel. To burn it up. That's right. right. This first burn was mostly just sort of dried it out and uh, we're going to do exactly the same thing again and see if we can get some actual uh, burn and, and movement down into the log. So it looks like we're just heating it up and it's just a whole lot of moisture in there. It's, uh, it's really sticky work. This is not, not going all that well right now. It's slow, slow going, slower than I was hoping for. Um, the burning, we're on the second burn and it just, I mean, it just took another quarter inch maybe. And uh, there's so much moisture in this wood. So we're just gonna go kind of go back to hacking at it because that's gonna, it seems like it's gonna work a lot faster. John, you're looking a little discouraged. It's, it's, it'll go faster. I'm sure it will, but it's going pretty slow right now. So we're not giving up. No, nope, nope. We got, we got lots of time left. 